thank you to ACYPL. Um, just briefly, uh, you know, really, I know we're all huge fans of the organization, but a time like this, I think this bipartisanship um, is really needed. And, and thank you for everything you all do. You're really glad to be here today. Um, as, as far as, um, you know, what we have seen play out, it's really worth repeating again, just the staggering amounts of money and the staggering speed upon which this was all done. If you look back at the economic crisis um, in 2008, you know, right before the election, we passed the TARP bill to quickly shore up um, the banks and the financial markets. President Obama took office in January, and it wasn't until the middle of February that we really passed um, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. And even then, which was far, far small, smaller than this package, it was about $800 billion. Um, not a single Republican in the House voted for that bill. And now you look just, you know, you know, a few years later, a decade later, and we had overwhelming bipartisan support. Phase four, another big response that deals with unemployment insurance, et cetera, is not setting up to be the same type of, um, this is a response that we absolutely need to have something on a tremendous scale. Uh, this is not going to be something that has broad bipartisan support for a number of buckets. It's just going to be a totally different process altogether than the way the first four packages developed. We are starting to see a, some positive information about a, a new vaccine coming. So we know this virus is here and it's going to be here for a little while longer. With that being the case, we have to figure out, you know, how do we do this as safely as possible? How do we help the economy? but be as safe as possible, given just the reality of where we're at right now. And whenever you can have businesses be operational, uh, that starts to uh, create more uh, good health in the economy. It just creates more possibility of people being off unemployment. So you just gotta be smart about it. It's a balance in you know, economics, it's about consequences, it's about balancing things. You cannot reopen the economy if people are not, or do not feel safe participating in that economy. The only way to reopen the economy is have a strong, effective public health response. And until that happens, we need to continue to support people and businesses financially. People just weren't going anywhere, and they're not really going to go anywhere if they can't go to work and they can't uh, go to the doctors and do the things that they need to do. So all of these things are, are a strong reminder, I think, of the importance of uh, opening the economy as safely as possible, as quickly as possible, because uh, you, you depend on that to be operational, to pay for road repairs, to pay for your teacher salaries, for things like that. Clearly, we also need to invest in our public health and medical infrastructure as well. Beyond the pandemic, we have seen the clear need for community health workers, including mental health. The lack of these investments has been revealed in the disparate impact of COVID in communities of color and communities of limited means. Healthy people are able to work, innovate and contribute to their communities. Investments in health and community wellness will help our people and therefore our economy to thrive.